and then you can set your mail settings and you will need your server who you want the mail to come from so say you wanted to say sales floor camera and set the server which in most situations is going to be mail dot my account dot com if you require verification for a login you will set your user ID and password and then you can add a mail account that you want it to do for email addresses where you want it to send to okay I'm not going to completely configure that because I don't have access to a mail server that um, that would use, but many of the free emails are now offering pop email settings. Uh, I believe Gmail will do this, uh, and uh, I believe Hotmail will also allow you to do SMTP uh, free mail. Um, but you can also use an account like your internet provider email account you can have it sent from there and you can send it to any email address once you've got your settings input correctly you can also adjust the video this camera is capable of MPEG-4 or Motion JPEG I want to leave it at MPEG-4 I want to set the, the frame rate to the highest it's capable of I've got the camera set to a local which means my camera and, com and video recording system are located on the same network but if you want to limit the bandwidth that it uploads the video to say your server is at a different location you can adjust that based upon what your upload speed for your internet account is I'm gonna go ahead and put it back up to the max and I'm gonna click on OK and apply I'm not going to go into tools. I can view the firmware. I can adjust the language of the camera. There shouldn't really be much that you need to do, but say you change the password on a camera you've already got set up, you can adjust it here. This icon here shows you a log, and just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to close it and I'm gonna go uh, walk around my sales floor but if you watch as soon as motion is triggered you'll see a little running man and a red light appear down here as soon as motion is triggered Okay, so I've just walked across my sales floor, and if you notice, it's still recording. It will record for 10 seconds after it stops detecting motion. And there it has just stopped. And now, I can go and view the recording. Now, if you'll notice, I now have a motion event here. And if I hi highlight it, I can now click on play, and it will automatically show up here. there's the light coming on triggering the motion and that is me walking around my sales floor I have the ability to speed up or slow down the playback I can reverse or I can stop the playback and once I'm done viewing that playback window, I can click the close button. And now I'm back to viewing the live video. So just so that you can once again view the log, 
you will now see that here's the date and time that the motion event started at. There's the date and time that it stopped detecting motion and stopped the recording. I can reserve that, which means I can lock that down where that file will not be overwritten. I can change my range unit. I can do a search from a specific calendar date to another specific calendar date. And I also have the ability to delete log entries. This log will, will show any time a user logs into the camera as well as any time it detects any type of event or a scheduled event takes a place.